Oh, hello guys. Welcome back again to my YouTube channel, guys. The Meslit Guru himself. So today I will be going through with you on the September paper that was written in 2021. This was a prelim. Some people call it a trial examination. So this paper was written. It was a provincial paper from Eastern Cape. Okay, so this is paper number two of mass lead okay so in this paper guys i'm going to do question one question two and question three in this video so there will be another video following with three and four okay so for now you'll be looking at question one question two and question three and i just want to take this moment guys i want to appreciate people that are busy subscribing to my channel people that are busy raising their thumbs up for my videos guys I appreciate your support. Can you please guide continue the support that you're showing me, guys? Continue subscribing, guys. Continue liking my videos and continue sharing my videos. I can I can see those that are sharing my videos, guys. I appreciate so much. So let's go straight to the question paper, guys, and try to answer those questions. Okay. Um uh, I want to change the pen now. Uh, let me make it red. Okay. Right. Right. And uh, on the first question, they say Miss Bessel sells 450 grams of uh, packs of rusk at 49 rand 50 per pack. The table below shows the uh, main ingredients of rusk. We have the self raising flour, we have the brain flour, we have raisins, and, and they say a rusk is a hard driving kit of 28. Quantities here. We have the quantities uh, of the ingredients that are needed. So they say the first question convert one hundred uh, one comma fifty six kilograms to grams. Okay. So we know that one gram from the metric system is equals to one thousand grams. So now we have kilograms. We have one comma fifty six kilogram which we don't know how much is it in in grams so we'll cross multiply so our question mark because going to be one multiplied by a question mark it remains the question mark is equals to 1,56 1,56 multiply by 1000 that gives us 1650 grams why do we say the grams now is because the question mark was on the left hand side and on the left hand side we can see that oh no the the question mark is on the right hand side and on the right hand side we can see that we have the gram so this number that is representing the question mark now becomes the grams <clears throat> okay so number two they say write in the simplified ratio form the uh, the mass of the raisins too so when i teach people always on my videos i told them i tell them that the ratio is always when you see the weight too you must put this dot so we're going to see the mass of the raisins the mass of the raisins is given as 125 grams and the mass of butter is given as 625 grams so we must simplify this ratio so when we simplify the ratio, we must check a number that when we divide both the numbers, we must not get a decimal. Okay? If you divide by uh, 125 by 5, even 160, one, uh, 625, you must divide it by 5. Okay? So when I check here, I can see that if I say 125 divided by 25, I get 5. So let me check it on 625. That shall be 625 divided by 25. So it gives me straight 25. Okay. So that means I can say 125 divided by, let me do it, divide by 25. Here, divide by 25. Meaning that our answer now is going to be 5 is to 25. <coughs> okay. <coughs> then number three, they say, calculate the number of cups of brain flour needed if Miss uh, Bear, uh, Basta bakes 800, I mean, 8 kilograms of rusk. 
okay they want to know how many cups of brain flour she will need okay let's go to our let, let's first convert eight eight kilograms into into grams because our ingredients are making grams not kilograms okay so we're gonna say eight kilogram is the same as we're gonna say one kilogram is equals to one thousand one thousand grams so we have eight kilograms to convert now this is our equation mark then we just cross multiply that means eight grams is equals to uh let me remove this eight gram is equals to is equals to eight thousand eight kilograms close to eight thousand grams okay that means that we need to know how many cups cups she will use if she wants to bake eight thousand grams so we're gonna say this five thousand grams of brass were made by 6,25 cups of brain flour. So we're going to say that is equals to 5,000 grams. Then we're going to say the cross multiplication. We put a question mark. Here we put our 8,000 grams. Then we cross multiply our question mark multiply by 5,000. That becomes 5,000 question mark. 5,000 question mark. Uh, that is equals to 6,25 6,25 multiply by 8,000 multiply by 8,000 that becomes 50,000 then we divide both sides by <clears throat> we divide both sides by 5,000 divide by 5 that gives us 10 cups that means our question mark is equals to 10 cups okay um uh on number four they say calculate the mass of raisins needed to bake uh 450 grams so everything here was 1.1.3 so we're gonna go to 1.1.1.4 here so they say we must calculate the mass of raisins needed to bake 450 grams of rice. So the, the mass of raisins that was given here, the mass of raisins was 125 grams. This mass of 125 grams made 5,000 grams of rice. So now we need to know how many mass of grams will make 400, I mean, how many mass of raisins will make uh 450 rask so we put question mark here then we cross multiply that's 5000 question mark is equals to 125 125 multiply by 450 that is 56250 then we divide both sides by 5000 we divide both sides by 5000 then our question mark becomes, then we divide here by 5,000, that gives us 11,25, 11,25 grams, meaning that for us to bake a rask of 450 grams, we will need 11,25 grams of raisins. Okay, I want to change the pen. All right. Let's go to 1.2. They say below is a coin that has a square hole in its center. Picture of a coin with a hole, then this is a diagram. So on the diameter here, we are given 32 millimeters. And then the square hole has an area of 0 0.9025. The circle coin has an area of 8.04 centimeters squared. The weight of the coin, which is the mass, is 28,25 grams. Now they say, uh, define the term diameter regarding the diagram on the top surface of the coin. Okay, so what can we say when we define the term diameter? Because we know that we can draw the line that presents the diameter. Okay, 
So in mathematics, uh, we say a diameter. Um, it is the straight line. Okay, it is the straight line that passes through the center of the of a circle. But then here we are not just given a circle. We are given a we are given the the coin here. That's what we need to talk about, okay? So we're gonna say the diameter is the line that goes that goes through, okay? Is the is the straight line uh, that goes that goes through the center of the coin. Because here we are not just given the, the circuit, we are given the coin, okay? Right, they say calculate the difference between the area of the circle, I mean the area of a circular coin and the square hole. So, uh, we are given the, we are given the area of the circular coin and the square hole, okay? So we are going to say the difference now is equals to we take the area of a circle coin, the area of a circle coin which is eight comma zero four two centimeter squared, we minus by zero comma nine zero two five centimeter squared, which is equals to eight comma zero four minus. 0, 0,9025 that gives us 7, comma, uh, let me write it correctly 7,1375 centimeter squared so they say they want your answer in millimeter squared so we go back to the to the to our table of the metric system where it says one centimeter is equal to 10 millimeters okay so we know that any number is to the power of one so everything here is to the power one so now because we need the relationship in square centimeters and square meters so we are going to square one side which are the centimeters we start by squaring this then we square this so this will say one to the power two is one Centimeter to the power 2, it becomes centimeter squared. So 1 centimeter squared is equal to, then we're going to say 10 to the power 2. That's 10 multiplied by 10. That gives us 100. So a millimeter to the power 2, that becomes millimeter squared. Therefore, 1 centimeter squared is equal to 100 millimeter squared. So now we are going to do the cross multiplication where we have 7, 1375 centimeter squared. We don't know how much is it. We put the question mark, we cross multiply. That would be question mark multiplied by 1. That becomes our question mark. And the other one now becomes 100 multiplied by 7, 1375. 7, 5. That gives us uh, 7, 1, 3, 7, 5, uh, millimeter squared. Okay, we move on. Then they say 1.2.3. Write the square hole area of the coin as a percentage. As a percentage. That means as a percentage of a circular coin area in the diagram. So that means we're going to take the area of the square, which is 0, 0,9025 centimeter squared. Uh, and then we divide by the area of the circular circle, which is 8,04 centimeter squared multiplied by 100. So that's 0, 0,9. 0.25 divided by 8,04 that gives us a uh, multiply by 100 that gives us 11,23 11,23 percent 
okay then now they say express the weight of the coin in kilograms so the weight of the coin here is given in grams we go back again one kilogram is equals to 1000 grams so now we're gonna do this so that we do the cross multiplication we're gonna say 28,25 grams is equals to what we don't know how much is it we put the equation mark then we cross multiply question mark multiplied by 1000 that becomes 1000 question mark is equals to 28,25 therefore we're gonna divide both sides by 1000 so our question mark is equals to 28,25 divided by 1000 and that will be 0, 0,02825 kilograms that is the weight of one coin in kilograms okay then they say calculate the radius of the coin in millimeters so we know that radius is equal to diameter divided by 2 our diameter is given as 32 then we're going to say 32 millimeters divided by 2 that becomes 16 millimeters now question 1.2.6 they say calculate the total mass of 15 coins in grams so we're going to have 28,25 grams multiplied by 15, which is equals to uh, 28,25 multiplied by 15. That gives us 400 and 423. Why am I writing 80? 423. 423 comma 75 grams okay now they say write the exact time in hours and minutes if the coin bought at 11 15 and sold four hours 15 minutes later so we need to know that at what time it will be sold at okay so we need to we, we see that it was bought at 11 15 so we're going to is going to be with us for four hours 15 minutes okay so what we're going to do we're going to start we know that this represent hours and this represent the minute so we're going to start by adding the minutes so we're going to add 50 with 15 that gives us 65 minutes as uh, what help what am i doing it gives us uh 65 minutes 65 minutes so we know that in this 65 minutes we have one hour five minutes okay so what we are going to do we are going to take this 11 and add it with one the one hour that is coming from adding 15 minutes with 50 minutes okay then now we know that after subtracting this one hour here we are left with in the minutes we are left with five minutes okay then we can get we can take these hours and add them here so we're gonna add four hours this will become 11 plus 1 plus 4 that is 12 plus 4 which is 16 hour five minutes that is where uh, this is the exact time where the coin will be bought okay oh this is the exact time where the coin is going to be sold okay 1.3 in 1.3 they say the diagram below shows the top view of a vegetable garden the perimeter of the vegetable garden is 8 comma is 8 comma 9 meters they say explain what it means <clears throat> what it means when and the when the diagram is not drawn to the scale it means that there is no relationship if it's not there is no scale here it's not drawn to the scale it means okay let me write it it means there is no uh, relationship relationship uh, between 
map distance and actual distance It's no relationship between the map distance and the actual distance. That means you cannot convert the length of any site here into the reality. Okay. Then they say calculate the length of site C, whereas they gave you the perimeter of this. So C is going to be the total perimeter of 8,9 centimeters minus 2,7. I, oh, where am I writing centimeters here? Wait, 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 wait. Making a mistake here. So that is uh eight comma nine meters minus two uh, comma seven meters minus one meters minus one comma seven meters. Someone can add all of them and subtract them from eight comma nine. Eight comma nine minus two comma seven minus one minus one comma seven. That gives us three that means c is equals to three comma five uh, meters okay and that will be the end of question number one then we're gonna run straight into question number two okay uh in question number two they say a couple from netherlands decided to have a three-day vacation at the makungube national park in the republic of south africa Annex A contains a map that they use to get to the National Park. Let's get to the map. Here is the map that they talk about. Right. Uh, we can see we have Pretoria, Polokwane. We can see all of this. We can we have the features A represent that B. We also see the direction of the map okay so let's go back to the question they say give the great reference of the bed trail camps so when you look at the vembet trail uh vembet trails camp is not given on the map but it is given as a letter there which is letter number d so we are going to track where is letter number d so here is our letter number d it means that it is represented by this triangle here so which is in grid number A3, okay? So our grid reference there is A3, A3, okay? Then number two, they say identify the provincial road between Messina and Mapungu National Park. So uh, between uh, Messina and Mapungu, so our Messina is here. Messina is here and Mapungu is here. So you cannot see any road here. But when you're coming up here, you're coming with N1. But then what happens to the N1 here? And then this road also comes here. So what happens to it? It means that the road in between here is R572. Okay, our road is R572. R five seven two and then this is how we see the uh, the provincial road okay then the next question they say name the national road on the map the national road on the map that we can see we already saw it we talked about it is the is the n1 when you look at this we only see n1 here okay other roads are the national roads Uh, let me let me get rid of this. I don't know what is happening. I don't want to write there. I don't want to write there. Okay. Uh, they say in which general direction is point drift from Pretoria? Point drift. We can see the point drift is here from pretoria meaning that our campus is going to be drawn at pretoria so now what we need to know we need to look at this where is our north our north is up here which is the south west east and when we connect the two dot we can see that the general direction there is north west 
So our direction is north west. Okay, now they say describe using the towns or routes numbers as reference two possible routes from Pretoria to Mapungubwe National Park. Okay, so the, if a person is from Pretoria, they can use, they can travel via N1 from Pretoria to Polukwani. Then from Polukwani, they take N1, they continue on the N1 from Polukwani to Makado. Then from Makado, they continue with the N1 from Makado to Messina. Then from Messina to Mapungube, they will take R572. Okay, or they can take N1 from Pretoria to Polokwane, then from Polokwane they go to Dendron with uh, R521, then from Dendron they will pass Vivo, then from Vivo they pass All Days, then from All Days then they go to this, what is this? It's A, which is uh, Shulungu, uh, Shulung, Shulago Lodge, yeah? Then from there they can take road, uh, this one, road R five seven five seven two to Messina. Then from Messina they can go to Mapungu. We continue with R five That is the direction there. Okay. Then you get your six marks. Two point two. The South African friends of the Netherlands couple. Uh, departed from Pretoria at uh, 4 30 a.m. to spend the holiday with them. Their journey is described as follows On their way from Polokwane, they took the turn off to R521 Road, rest for 45 minutes at Dendron, and took 15 minutes to do some shopping. and fill up the car's uh, fuel tank at all days. Now they say, if the scale of the map is given as 1 is to 3 million, and the distance measured on the map between Bad Bridge and Messina is 1,3 centimeters, calculate in kilometers the actual distance between Bad Bridge and Messina. Okay? So, what are we going to do? We're going to say how we, we need the actual distance. How do we calculate the actual distance? The actual distance is equals to map distance multiplied by scale factor. When you are given a number scale like this, this number, this 3 million becomes your scale factor. So our actual distance is going to be our map distance was 1,3 centimeters. Then we multiply by 3 million. So that becomes 1,3. 1,3 multiply by 3 million. That becomes 3,900,000 centimeters. But they want your answer in kilometers. So you're going to convert your centimeters into kilometers. We know that one kilometer is equals to 100,000 centimeters. Then we do the cross multiplication so that we can convert. So we have 3,900,000 centimeters, which is the equation mark. Then we cross multiply. So we're going to have 100,000 equation mark is equals to 3,900,000 then we divide both sides by 100,000 we divide both sides by 100,000 then our equation mark will be our equation mark will be 39 kilometers okay uh, now they say determine showing all calculations the distance from Pretoria to Mapungube National Park as it appears on the map. So remember everything under 
uh, 3.2 it is based on this statement that is given here they are no longer going to they are not going to use n1 up until messina but they will turn from polokwan and take this left okay take this right so when we observe on the map there the distance that they are going to travel they will travel 260 plus 60 kilometers plus 40 plus 50 kilometers plus 22 kilometers uh what am i writing there plus 22 kilometers plus 23 plus this is the 23 from here to here they cannot turn here because here there is a mine here it's written there so 23 then 23 from here to here so that is 23 then plus 68 which is from here to here so now here is another thing now there is no distance from this point to this point what are we going to do you remember we have calculated the distance from messina to back bridge so we all know if you didn't know you must know that the back bridge is here at at at, at mapungu there okay so what are we going to do we add again our 39 kilometers so that will be 260 plus 60 plus 40 plus 50 plus 22 plus 23 plus 23 plus 68 plus 39 which is equals to 585 kilometers okay then let's go back that is 585 uh, 585 kilometers now listen to what they're saying let me see if where i'm going to write this because i need some words no place to write okay the south african friends traveled at an average speed of 120 kilometers between pretoria and mapungu the national park aiming to arrive at 10 a.m remember they are moving from pretoria to mapungu to meet their friend also considering all the stoppage show uh, show with calculation whether they will make it at this at this end time you may use the following formula distance cut the so here we need to calculate time we have the distance we have the average speed okay so what we are going to do is that you we can draw this triangle of ours so this triangle help us to work out the formula so this is not the formula to calculate the time but we can change this formula okay so this line means divide this line means multiply so we are going to take the formula the way it is and place it here so we're going to put d here it doesn't mean that if d is the first one you do, you have to put it on top no so we're going to put s here we're going to put time here so that look when i highlight d what is it that i see i see speed multiplied by time that's what the formula says okay right so now what do we need we need the time so we are just going to highlight the time that means that time is equals to distance divided by speed our distance is 585 kilometers divided by the speed of 120 kilometers per hour so that gives us a time a driving time a driving time of a driving time of uh, 585 divided by 120 uh, that gives us 4,875 hours okay so what we are going to do we have four hours so we must convert this into minutes so we are going to take our four hours out and then we will remain with 0,875 seven five hours so we know that one hour is equals to 60 minutes so we're gonna have this is zero comma eight seven five 
hours, then we cross multiply. Okay, so our question mark is going to be 60 multiplied by 0, 0.875. That gives us 52 minutes. That means for driving only, they will spend 4 hours 52 minutes. Then they are going to rest for 45 minutes at Dendron. And then they will also do a shopping for 15 minutes. So all in all, these people on the way, they are going to spend to have 15 minutes plus 45. 15 minutes plus 45 is, uh, is 60 minutes, which is an hour. So we are going to add this. That means they are going to take 5 hours. 52 minutes on the way this is the time that they're going to to take and remember they are going to start their journey as stated they, uh, they are going to start a journey at 4 30 a.m remember this is eight marks they are going to start a journey at four hour 30 minutes in the morning so they are going to spend five hour 52 minutes on the way so now we're going to start by adding the minutes we're going to add 30 minutes with 52 minutes that's going to be 82 minutes hmm? yeah so we're going to subtract 60 minutes because 60 minutes makes an hour so we're gonna have four hours plus one hour plus five hours uh, that uh, the minutes that are left after we have subtracted uh, 60 here is 22 minutes so that is 22 minutes uh, 22 minutes that means this people is going to be 4 plus 1 plus 5 that will be 10 hour 22 minutes that means this people they will arrive at 10 22 minutes it means that these people, they will not arrive there at the time that they wanted to arrive at. Okay. Right. So that was, oh, that is not the end of the, the, the question. Mm. Okay. Let me remove this because this is recorded. I'm going to remove everything here so that we can answer these questions. Record it. So, yeah. Right, so then, then they say the petrol consumption uh, of the car is 0, 0,79 liters per 10 kilometers. Okay, and then they say, they now say, determine the total liters of the fuel to be used between Pretoria and Mapungube. Remember, they are going to, okay, we are first going to say 0, 0,79 liters is equals to 10 kilometers so we are going to do the cross multiplication which is 585 kilometers that are going to be traveled we don't know how many liters so we're going to have 10 question mark is equals to uh, 0, 0,79 multiplied by 58585 that gives us 462 comma 15 then we divide both sides by 10 which is which now gives us then divide by 10 that gives us 46 46 comma 215 liters it means that these people they will need a petrol of 46 comma 215 liters from Pretoria to Mapungu so the next question says Calculate the cost of the petrol to drive from Pretoria to Mapungube National Park. The petrol price is 23 rand 90 cent per liter. Okay, they are saying the petrol price is 23 rand 90 cent per 
one liter. Okay, so how many liters will they buy? They they need for that car, they will need forty six comma two one five. So how many? How much is that? We don't know. Then we cross multiply. So one multiply by question mark. Our question mark is equals to forty six comma two one five multiplied by twenty three comma nine zero. That gives them. That gives us a uh, one thousand. 104,5385 Okay <clears throat> Now let's continue to question number 3 Then on question number 3 they say uh, Miss uh, Bagley's son owns a small bakery She uses a cylindrical pen as shown below Okay, they say it has a diameter of 280 millimeters, a height is not given. A cylindrical baking pan has 3079,16 centimeter cubic capacity, and then the oven must be pre uh, preheated to 430 degrees Fahrenheit before placing the baking pan. Now they say calculate in centimeters the cylindrical baking pan. I mean the circumference so we know that with the circumference i don't like the formulas that they give us in the in the equation paper i know my formula so know your formulas know the formulas that i gave you on one of my videos about measurement so it's easier to use them so but our form our our units there is, is needed in centimeters so the formula that i use for circumference is equals to pi d where our pi is 3,142 multiplied by our diameter is 280 millimeters. So how much is our circumference in millimeters? 3,142 multiplied by 280. That is uh, 879,76 millimeters. So they want our answer in centimeters, all right? So we know that one centimeter is equals to 10 millimeters. And now we have the centimeters, which is eight. Mm -mm. We have the millimeters, not centimeters. We need centimeters. We have uh, eight, okay. We have eight seven nine comma seven six millimeters. So this is the question mark, and then we cross multiply. Question mark multiply by ten. That is ten question mark, which is equals to eight seven nine comma seven six millimeters. Then we divide both sides by ten. Then our question mark is equals to uh, our question mark is equals to eighty seven comma nine seven six centimeters that means our circumference is eighty seven comma nine nine seven six then they say determine in centimeters the height of the cylindrical pen you may use the formula this is the correct formula given to calculate a volume of a cylinder okay so a volume of a cylinder is equals to pi r squared multiplied by height so now we need to multiply the height i mean to uh, to determine the height we are given the volume of 3079,16 centimeter cubic whereas our pi is 3,142 and in our radius radius is equal to diameter divided by 2 which is 280 divided by 2 is going to be 140 140 millimeters so you look at our volume is in centimeters so we divide the millimeters by 10 to get the centimeters so the radius must also be in centimeters so our radius is four centimeter then we square it according to the formula then we multiply by our height multiply by our height okay so uh, that will be 
3079,16 cm cubic is equals to 3,142 multiplied by 14 to the power 2 that is 196 centimeter squared multiplied by height so now we are going to say 3079,16 centimeter cubic is equals to then we are going to multiply everything that side 3,142 multiply by 196 that give us 612, 69 centimeter squared height so we need the value of height so we are going to divide here by 612,69 centimeter squared therefore we also divide here by 612,69 centimeter squared so it's going to be 3079,16 divided by 612,69 let me see uh, I don't know what I'm getting here Let's, uh, let me check again here on top because last time I used uh, different answers here and then I got different things here So there I have uh, 3,142 3, multiply by 196 multiply by 196 yeah I see that something is not all right here uh, blah, 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 three, comma, this the answer here the answer here is let me remove this. Uh, only the uh, everything. Everything. My calculator was wrong here. So this is um, six six one five comma eight three two six one five comma eight. 32 centimeter squared centimeter squared okay uh six one five comma eight three two centimeter squared so this one will cancel this then and we remain with h so we're gonna have three thousand and seventy nine comma one six divided by six one five comma eight three two and that gives us a height of five centimeters so someone can ask and say why are we now having five centimeters is because we have divided centimeter square centimeter cubic by centimeter square this centimeter cubic means centimeter multiplied by centimeter multiplied by centimeter and the centimeter squared means centimeter multiplied by centimeter which centimeter will cancel a centimeter and a centimeter here will cancel a centimeter you remain with one centimeter okay let me use a different pen because i'm going to do the different part. and now they say convert 430 degree fahrenheit to degrees use the formula degree fahrenheit i mean degree celsius is equal to degree fahrenheit minus 32 divided by 1,8 so we're going to have 430 minus 32 divided by 1,8. And that will give us 430 minus 32. That will give us 398 divided by 1,8. Divide by 1,8. And that will give us that degree Celsius is equals to 221,11 okay and let's proceed to uh, question 3.2 and um, miss 
Barclays is concerned about the amount of sugar intake she consumes. She needs an article. She reads an article on the internet about the amount of sugar contained in some drink. Table two below shows the two the sugar per volume of some drinks. They show that one one gram of sugar is equals to four calories, and then they say one tablespoon of sugar is equals to four hundred grams. Calculate the value of the miss. Uh, calculate the missing value A and B. Okay, let's start with A. They have shown you that, uh, I want to take an example here. They show you that 500 grams have the number of sugar is 20 and then the number of the calories is 8. How did they determine that? They have used 20 grams, okay? So now what are we going to do? We are given the relationship between the grams and this. So we are going to say 1 gram is equals to 4, okay? So now we need to convert this A. So we can see that we have uh, 57,3 grams, which is equals to A. Then we cross multiply. A is equals to uh, 4 multiplied by 57. 4 multiplied by 57,3. That gives us 229, Two. That means A is 229 uh, calories, okay? So we have now B. Let's determine B. B, we know that we are given the relationship again between the grams and the calories so that they are 4. So we're going to say now we are given the calories of 169,2, which is equals to B. Then we cross multiply so we're gonna have 4b is equals to 169,2 then we divide both sides by 4 divide both sides by 4 therefore b uh, b is equals to 169,2 divided by 4 is equals to 42,3 grams 42,3 grams okay right um hmm. then we go to number two point i mean three point two point two they say determine the total amount of sugar in grams that will be consumed by miss uh, uh badly if she drinks three cans of monster per week Three cans of monster, I mean a can of monster, it have 57, 57,3 grams of sugar. So she will drink only three cans in one week. Okay, so we multiply here by three. So the sugar that she had consumed is five, I mean 57,3 multiply by three. Remember one can has... 57,3 grams of sugar so that means in a week she would have consumed 171,9 grams of sugar okay then they say a uh, miss uh, badly decided to be more health conscious and changed her drink to two 500 milliliter vitamin water per day one 500 milliliter of NJ uh, Energized per week Okay, that means in a week she will she will only drink one bottle of that Energized, okay, so but in a day she will take two 500 milliliter of vitamin water But when you look at the vitamin water here the vitamin water contains 5,5 grams of sugar so in a day she's going to consume two So in a week she will consume how much? Okay, so it's going to be 5,5 multiplied by 2, that is 11. That means in a day, she will consume 11 grams of sugar in one day. So a week, we know that it has 7 days. So we multiply this by 7. So in 7 days, she would have consumed 77 grams of sugar only on the vitamin water. 
then she will again consume how many sugar here on the energide uh she will consume 20 therefore we add 20 grams here why do we add 20 grams is because she is only going to consume one 500 milliliter of the energide per week okay so that is going to be uh 97 97 grams of sugar then they say verify by show of calculation whether her sugar intake per week is now 57 of the previous intake now she is taking 97 grams of sugar where else she was taking 171.9 grams then we multiply by 100 because we need the percentage 97 divided by 171,9 that is give that gives us exactly 56,4 percent that means indeed the the intake that she have she that the current intake is 56 percent is 56,4 of the previous intake Calculate the total mass of sugar in kilograms that will be consumed by one person in one year by drinking two 330 milliliter cans of Coca-Cola daily. That is me. Okay, so this person every day consumes two. 330 milliliter of coca-cola let's go and check the grams of sugar uh, they say to cal calculate the mass of sugar so the mass of sugar is going to be we can check coca-cola coca-cola is 35 grams of sugar there okay so we're gonna say 35 grams multiplied by two remember one can is having 35 grams of sugar okay so that will be 70 grams of sugar okay so we're going to multiply here by 365 days so that we can check how many grams the person will consume in a year and uh, multiply by 365 so in a year that individual is going to consume 25,550 grams of sugar okay so they need your answer in kilograms so the relationship between kilograms it says one kilogram is equals to 1000 grams so we do the cross multiplication we have 25 550 grams which is equals to equation mark then we cross multiply so it's going to be 1000 question mark which is equals to uh, 25,550 therefore we divide by 1,000 we divide here by 1,000 so the question mark is going to be that means in a year that person will be consuming 25,55 kilograms of sugar by only drinking a coca-cola okay now they say suggest two ways on how um uh, Bagley can reduce her sugar intake. So the suggestion that we can have is that she must drink more of still water. Remember, the still water doesn't have any sugar. Okay, so it's just water. So she must take more of still water, and she must also at least take one drink that has sugar. A week she must only take one drink per week that has a sugar in that way she will reduce the intake of sugar okay so this brings us guys to the end of our video guys uh, I thank you guys for watching for this farm please make sure that you subscribe to my channel you share my videos with others so that they can also get the knowledge I thank you guys see you next time